Good morning, St. Louis University High School, and welcome to Armageddon, the only show on KU High TV that provides for you intelligent political discussion and the potential for a fist fight. I'm Mike Quinlan, and I'll tell you how this works. Every Tuesday morning in homeroom and in some select activity periods, we will broadcast from here in our luxurious studio in the heart of the school, the freshman hallway. That being said, many of you may already have guessed that I lean towards the right on many issues. Actually, I'm about as far right as you can possibly be. On this show, we will tend to have guests as we do today. That being said, I would like to introduce to you the second half of Armageddon, Kevin Gear. Welcome to Armageddon. I'm here to provide the sensible progressive liberal counterbalance to Mike Quinlan's far right, would you say? Politics, I must say. We're going to be debating, we're going to have a lot of fun on the show, and we're also going to cover some of the serious topics of our day, national and international. So I hope you tune in in the next couple of weeks. Our guest today is well known to everyone in the school. His dedicated service to public affairs as a FEMA certified level two storm spotter, as our KU high weatherman, and as a Kirkwood police explorer, have earned him enormous respect throughout this community. Here with us today to talk about global warming is Mark Jason. Mark? Thanks, Mike. Well, you know, I am not a, um, a climate expert, so I'm not going to be the, you know, professor of climate here, or climatology here, but I, I can give you some insight on uh, the global warming theory. And I, and I say that because it, it really is a theory. Um, <coughs> it seems like, you know, you have all these pundits go on to cable news networks, and, and all they do is just, you know, I think they scare people into uh, believing that global warming is some kind of dangerous threat that will harm society. But I do think it is a threat, but do I think it's as serious as people, I'm not going to name any names, okay, Al Gore um, says it is, I don't think so. But I, I do understand, and I, I think the National Weather Service, you know, NOAA with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, and the AMS, American Meteorological Society, uh, they all, they all, they all kind of comply that there is a global warming um, problem, but they don't really go as far as saying what you know other people say is it's going to wreak havoc all along this world. So that's what I'm going to say. Right, because if it's supposed to wreak havoc, I mean, according to Al Gore, the well, it's supposed to end in like less than ten years or something, something like that. Like that yeah. The clock is actually the, the the clock to the end of the world is on Rush Limbaugh's website. But so I would recommend the It, got, it got moved up recently, didn't it? Something like it's like around nine years, maybe maybe close to eight and a quarter. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, Kevin, I'll let you begin uh, our cross examination. Great. What's your opinion on the recent IPCC report that was released about a week or so ago that states that, quote, most of the observed increase in globally average temperatures since the mid-20th century is very likely, and that's 90 percent, due to human contributions? I do think that humans do have an effect on global warming um, from auto emissions um, industries. But I think what agencies such as the IPCC, what they do is they just focus on humans. They don't really focus on... Uh, the natural effects of global warming. Um, again, I'm not saying here saying global warming is a hoax. It's not you know true because there is signs of global warming. Um, I just think people overblow um, if that's a word overblow yeah, the right. um, the whole situation. So well, even then, it's still only a 90 percent chance that humans may have had some kind of effect on you know our global warming here. I would like to point out that you know. This whole idea of the Earth getting warmer is something that is hard to deny because it's easily documented. However, I think what's most in question here, and maybe you can add a little more insight into this, is the fact that you know humans can't have had that much of an impact on the, the reasons the world heats up or cools down. For instance, you know the, the, the global cooling in the 80s is something that you know people sent, tend to forget when they're talking about the fact that the Earth is getting warmer now, which... I mean, well, Mike, um, uh, if I could cut in a minute, the global cooling, that was due to a completely non-human factor. That was due to the eruption of Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines. What do you guys are... I, there's something called the glaciation cycle. It's 100,000 years, you know, and, and it, it, they've recorded back for millions of years. And every 100,000 years, there's, there's different... It's broken up here. 90,000 is... It's, it's, it's not gonna. It's a cooling. It's not an ice age, but it's a cooling age, and, and inside that cooling age is an ice age. We are right now. We've already passed that ninety thousand. We are on the warming part of this cycle, and and it's clear. And we are in the thirteenth, fourteenth year of this cycle here, and that's about average for the warming. And it, in in some cases, in some of these cycles, you know, the warming can last for twenty, twenty-five years. So, that is one um, 
situation, I'm sorry, that's one possibility of why the Earth is warming at a constant rate. Well, so what you could be saying here is that this warming that we're having is just something that happens naturally. There is definitely natural warming in our, uh, in our environment. So what, what we're getting at here is perhaps that the uh, emphasis that politicians and whatnot place on global warming and you know, using tax dollars to find ways to right. prevent global warming is maybe just wasted because the Earth is going to get warmer anyway. I mean, I and even if it does, it's not going to like blow up in 10 years. I, I think so. I'm not going to try to get into you know, political insight okay. here, but I will say that it seems like in the past 10 years, 15 years almost, global warming has become more of a political issue than any other issue. You know, it's, it's all about it takes, politics takes now. Tax dollars. But I, but, it takes tax dollars to fix. But I mean, um, uh, what, are you going to, what are you going to say about how, um, uh, about the ozone layer depletion? That's mostly, that's, that chlorophyll or well, like CFCs, I said, you know, that's humans, mostly humans right there. Humans do contribute to um, some of the global warming, but I just don't think... And the breakdown of the ozone layer, that's a... Um, uh, that, that's that contributes very directly to that, and that's a thing you can pin almost entirely on human usage. Yeah, but, but how much does the depletion, you know, the said depletion of the ozone layer really have to do with it, global warming? That it, we don't even think really has to do with humans anyway. I mean, from from my point of view here, it just seems to me that global warming is going to happen, global cooling is going to happen, and that humans don't really have any kind of you know, say. So they may, you know, raise the temperature at maybe a degree, but I mean, is a degree going to make our Earth it, blow up? It, you know? But a degree, it can make um, a gl that can affect whether or not glaciers will melt. That can affect flooding. That can well, affect um, uh, re precipitation patterns in some parts of the world. If I may talk about the glaciers up there, I, I do think that with these, with, with warming and a degree or so, the, I think it actually, and there are a lot of meteorologists who believe that global warming is actually a good thing, especially for the, uh, the northern pole areas, because if you raise the temperature a degree or two up there, up there, let's, I mean, we're talking about the poles, the South Pole, North Pole, it's, it's, it's very dry, and not a lot of moisture falls. But if you raise the temperature just a little bit, just a little bit, um, the atmosphere, the mo you know, become more moist, and more precip will fall, and that's key, you know, ice caps, you know, from snow. So the more the snow falls, the better the ice caps are, and the better uh, le uh, less chance of having uh, melting occur. Um, that's some of the meteorologists' uh, standpoint. I tend to agree with those meteorologists, but I, I do think that again, um, humans uh, have caused uh, some parts of uh, global warming. And but is the human cause of global warming going to end up in the destruction of the Earth? I mean, I don't think are so. Are these doomsday calls that Let's we put it hear this from way. politicians? I, I don't think so. I think it's a small percentage. Humans, I, 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 humans do, um, you know, put a, a dent into the atmosphere and into the, the ozone, but I, I do think it's a small percentage compared to natural effects. That's well, thank you very much, Mark. That's all the time we have for today. The discussion that we had will be online later. It is also going to be rebroadcast at some point in time. I would like to thank Kevin Gear. I would like to thank our producer, Nick Pelican. I would like to thank our executive producer, Mr. Tim O'Neill. And look forward to our next episode on Tuesday, which will debate the war on terror. Thanks for watching Armageddon. I'm Mike Quinlan. Have a great day. Armageddon, the only sh sh <laughs> I'm gonna do everything Stop, Mark. Mike? Uh, Mark, you're the guest. You're the uh, climate expert here today. We're gonna cut that right there and repeat the question because I was not listening at all because I thought it was directed towards Mike and he looked at me and I'm, let's do that, do that one again.